Good morning, greeting viewers, and welcome to a day in the life of Rob Chapman. I got up at six o'clock this morning, maybe quarter past six, and currently I'm feeding my little boy Theo some, we call it banorage, but it's banana porridge. And we're watching some delightful and enticing cartoons. Apples and bananas. Then I'm gonna get myself packed and dressed, eat myself some breakfast, and head off to the studio to do some recording. Come with me, why don't you? On today's adventure. To... This is generally pajamas and blanket and snuggle time. And then while he's playing with his toys, I don't want to check emails and go over comments and things and just catch up with people like Lee and Michael Doyle and all the people that I work with in the different businesses that I'm involved in. I get asked quite a lot what I eat. I think this is because I used to be a vegan and be as a vegan, so a lot of people think I'm a vegan. I'm not a vegan. I'm a vegetarian because I eat eggs. Um, and when, well, I'm a vegetarian in England, and then when I go to Asia for work, it's, it's not impossible if you're a tourist, because you can choose where you're going to, and you can, you can, you can choose areas that would be more suitable for that kind of uh, lifestyle. But when you're on business and you don't really get a choice about where you're going, it is, it is impossible. Uh, the, the, the easiest way of telling uh, somebody in um, the depths of Korea or Indonesia that you are a vegetarian to tell them you're a Buddhist, um, which sometimes works, but even then, you're likely to get half a crab in the soup just for flavor. Yeah, that's it. Good boy. Fingers, good boy. Sharp, it's strong in the game. Solid pioneer in the field. Once asked for vegetable noodles, and my wife ended up with jellyfish uh, stew, I think it was, I don't know. It basically, um, some of the Asian cultures, they just, they cook using fish or bones to make a stock. Um, so you just never know, unless you speak, you know, fluent Indonesian or fluent Korean. A lot of places in Korea, and I speak really good English, but some of the places that I go to, they don't. I do eat a lot of, uh, Peanut butter. I eat a lot of, you know, normal everyday foods. Lots and lots of vegetables. I cook a lot myself. I cook loads of meals. I love cooking. I like to cook. If I wasn't a musician, I definitely would have uh, owned a restaurant by now. I've got a pretty solid collection of hot sauces. This is the only one I haven't and probably will never try. But for breakfast this morning, I'm just going with the classic uh, Nando's Peri Peri on this. It'll be great. He's getting there, huh? <laughs> He's absolutely obsessed with ABC Kids TV. But I'm a big fan of Padanamo, which I think is a better musical score. Oh my God. By the way, this powerhouse breakfast is made from uh, oats, cheese seeds, bananas, uh, almond milk, and peanut butter. My favorite new thing is to get stuff out of the bin and then throw it around the living room. <laughs> I'm here recording. Tosca are here rehearsing for what? For our Act Tangent Festival. Yeah. On Saturday. These guys are recording a new single. <laughs> Hello, mate, how are you doing? Uh, you look like you've been carrying lots of stuff and you need a coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit incestuous in the studio, isn't it? Well, yeah, I'm Jimmy. I, um, I try to uh, facilitate bookings and make the coffee and and, uh, and, and, and and pour the beer. But you're a musician as well. I'm also a musician. I uh, always learning, always learning. Which band are you in? I'm in Tiger Cub. It's my main thing. And then um, I do these little bits and bobs for other people. I answer the phone too. Hello, Brian Electric. Rocked up with his bass guitars. Tell um, us about them, buddy. They're awesome, but they haven't been photographed yet, so they. Basically, my, my bases are going to be photographed to go on the Chapman website and retailers and all that sort of stuff. So I've got them, but because they're not... Okay, so we're doing Art Tangent on Friday and Pliny on... No, Art Tangent Saturday, Pliny Sunday. I'm going to use those bases. But you can't scratch them, I can't them, scratch Dave. them. <laughs> Basically means you can't play them, Dave. Yeah, I know. Basically. Let's have a look. Oh, look at that. It's lovely, isn't it? Really nice. 
It came out really well. How do you find the fan fret? Does it just feel natural? Yeah. Yeah. It's way better than playing five string. Really? Yeah. Yeah, anyone that plays five string. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So, I'm joking. so has both. The sea of five strings isn't going to have you. Yeah, bell bronze frets. Right, bell bronze. Let's see what it looks like when you hold it. Yeah. It looks like I've always held it. it, it yes, it does. <laughs> Don't scratch it, Dave. Yeah. And what's the other one like? Let's see the other one. Don't fall over my guitar case, I'll put it in the middle of the floor. It's like the same, but not fanny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the little dark markings on it. Yeah. Maybe one, of, one of the photos from the factory, someone's going to get an awesome looking one that's got this flame that bursts out here and then bursts out there as well. Right, like a, like a Hadouken. Yeah. No, they've really, really, really come out fucking beautifully, haven't they? Yeah. And what's the timber requisite upon this beast? Uh, so it's an Avancor body, Mappa yeah. Bell top, uh, Wayne Gate and Avancor through neck. Nice. And the fretboard? Is Wenge. And Bartolini pickups. Single core Bartolini pickups. Oh, it's Bartolonis? Uh, they're okay. a premium jazz pickup. Nice, because you were such a jazzer. I, I tried so many different, for both basic, both the core range and these, I tried so many pickups and preamps and stuff. And, uh, and for this bass, this was the winning pick. Right, Bartoloni it is then. I'm glad that a day in the life of Rob Chapman also had to have a double bass <laughs> unboxing. Bass <laughs> day. I'm doing a day in the life of Rob Chapman. Okay. So you're obviously a part of my day. Mm -hmm. So it's important to get you involved. <laughs> sure. I'm sorry. It's fine. Here's another random link that Rabia's just pointed out. Yeah, this, this brewery, Tailgate Beer, in Nashville and Charlotte, we did our clinic there where Johnny Highland came down to hang out and basically melted our faces with yeah. incredible country shred. <laughs> Just a real quick rundown of what we're using to record Idle Hands. For a change, I'm gonna use the Backpack Cub 40R. Just because we're after crystal cleans and sort of sparkling, shimmering, compressed, haunted forest tone on the reverb dial. And it sounds like this with this baritone. <laughs> regular pedal board stuff that you've seen, including that, and then for a lead tone, I got this kind of crazy Immortal Jimi Hendrix Octave Fuzz and a prototype Chapman Drive and Boost here, as yet unnamed, that takes you from. Bring your wife to work day, so Nat's come to work doing her work dance, talking about 30 <laughs> second notes. Yep. I just had the rest of the oat milk, so Bia's annoyed with me. And that's what I'm drinking.
fine. I think that'll be fine because the guitar cuts through way more on those three anyway. Do it, man. Let's do it. Here we go. Good luck, Jack. Aaron's dog's cousins aren't said the <laughs> I've got two acoustic guitars. One of them is tuned down two whole tones to C standard. One of them, the parlor, is tuned up a semitone. Um, to F. So I'm using different chord voicings, causing different harmonics. And they both sound great in different ways. So I've got to layer it on top of all this electric guitar and bass. And then I guess we'll just see which one sounds better. I think currently, I think the parlor sounds a lot brighter, cheerful, kind of, it just sounds like it will fit with the track a little bit better. That's a lovely bit. <laughs> Unbelievably, I've just found out that in a room at the end of this corridor, there's a band rehearsing for two days, and I am a giant fan of this band, and I can't believe they're here, and it's so cool that I'm filming while this is going on. I'm going to have to get a photograph. It's UFO, Phil Mogg, Michael Schenker. <laughs> I'm actually not sure of the bass and drum lineup. Phil Morgan, Michael Schenker from UFO, down that corridor, about to rehearse for whatever they're gonna do. So that's made my day. This recording can get a shit for all I care. <laughs> really going to believe this, but obviously you no know Chris plays a mean drum. Oh no. <laughs> he plays a little bit of guitar, play a bit of guitar. <laughs> Guess what your influences are. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Day one complete, just finished the solo, really happy with it, and uh, gonna head back, get some dinner, and then back in tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And uh, tomorrow it's acoustic guitars, all the vocals, should be, should be fun. <laughs>